Do languages evolve? Or is there something else going on? I'm Luke Ranieri, and this is Polymathy. So the subject of evolution of language is one that comes up frequently with my students and also with other colleagues of mine. Languages don't have to evolve spontaneously. In fact, I say they do not. I have a problem with this idea of associating the term evolution with language for a few different reasons. So let's talk about how we use this word evolution in another context first. The uh, word evolution is from the Latin word evolvere, which means to unroll, almost like unrolling a carpet. So evolutio, that Latin word is like unrolling, unfolding, unfurling. Today most people associate the term evolution with the theory of evolution, as put forward by Charles Darwin. But in fact, Charles Darwin himself didn't use the term evolution more than once in his whole book. He preferred the term descent with modification. The word evolution was used previously in the 1600s by the Scottish geologist Charles Lyell when describing biological processes that can change. And one of the reasons that Darwin didn't prefer this idea of evolution is even then it had this connotation of progress, of moving things forward, and as if there was some sort of direction, some sort of a heading. And even today, many people tend to think of evolution as some kind of progress forward biologically, like things are supposed to change in a more uh, complicated or more advanced way. And while that is true in many cases, it isn't true in all cases. There are creatures alive today like the cockroach, the crocodile, ginkgo trees, which have remained virtually unchanged for millions of years. They have not evolved in all that time. They haven't needed to. They're already adapted to their environments. And so there is no arrow of progress that has to happen for any species. So the idea that we still have in our heads that evolution is sort of a always moving towards something better or inherently good is a simplistic way of understanding it. But as the theory of evolution became more popular in the 1800s, it was applied to other things having nothing to do with biology. And this usually resulted in some very bad things. The most notable case that I think in my reading of history is when evolution was applied to people. It was known as social Darwinism. The idea that there are groups of people that are successful today, certain races, that are more successful, more technologically advanced, because they are inherently by their genetics superior to others. And this is the foundation of Aryanism and fascism and Nazism, the belief that uh, there are some people that should be uh, removed from the earth and that others should just take over. And I regard those ideas as pretty evil and uh, not have not been good for the planet as a whole. And while I think that applying the term evolution to language has thankfully not resulted in anything particularly evil, it definitely seems to be incorrect. The idea that languages are inherently changing in some direction then they have to go in does not seem accurate to me at all. In fact, I find the evidence is absolutely contrary. Many people would say to me then, well, look at the Romance languages. Look how they changed from Latin. Latin is the mother language spoken by the Romans in Europe, and it became uh, Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, French, Romanian. I know a number of scholars that regard this transition from classical Latin into vulgar Latin, into the Romance languages as something that necessarily happened by the nature of the language itself. I believe the bias that has inspired many people to think that languages must change or even must become more simple over time is influenced by those who have seen a lot of Western European languages where this phenomenon has occurred. The changing of Latin into the more simple, so-called, Romance languages and also the case of where how English has also changed and become more simple in some ways over time with respect to Middle or especially Old English, which had more complicated grammatical features in it. But was this change inevitable? Was it necessary for Italian to become Italian and not remain Latin? Was it necessary for Portuguese and Spanish to split off? The scholars that think this 
take the evidence. They look at these Romance languages and see how they've changed. They also see that in the slang of these languages, certain details of grammar are ignored by the younger people sometimes, or people that aren't as well educated perhaps, and say, oh look, there's the evidence that the language must be changing. I have another video about Latin, and you'll find the link to it in the description of this video. I bring up this example of Latin because for about 2,000 years, Latin has remained virtually unchanged. To communicate about day-to-day -day issues, we have invented new terms to speak in the language, but we're still using the old basic vocabulary of Latin to do that. We are adding a little bit to the language to be able to talk about email and telephones and space travel and other technological ad advancements and other social advancements that have occurred in the intervening two millennia. But that's it. No radical changes. Nothing that completely changes the language to make it different or incomprehensible from its ancient version. And the point is that Latin itself has remained, in a way, fossilized for thousands of years. Although there are no vast communities of people with their children going up speaking Latin that I'm aware of anywhere in the world, it's still a language that I, among others, use to communicate. And that makes it alive, it makes it vital, new stuff is being written and spoken in Latin all the time, every day, by thousands of people around the world. And it is a wonderful experience, just like learning and speaking any other language. Otherwise, the language is exactly as it was. And how do we achieve this? Education. And I'm resting my whole theory, my whole opinion on this, on the idea of education itself. So going back to the example of the Romance languages, why is it then that all of these languages have changed? Well, like I said, education is the key. Ancient Romans did not have the kinds of education systems we have today in our modern industrialized countries. In most of these countries, at some level, whether say the United States, where that's a federal or state level, education is either mandatory or strongly encouraged in a vast way. So pretty much every citizen of our country gets the opportunity to learn all of the basics of our language and to adapt into the system of English grammar and vocabulary. And this is true of many other countries as well. I remember as a kid seeing science fiction shows and movies taking place hundreds of years in the future where the actors the characters were speaking in perfectly normal American or British or maybe even Australian English. It sounded exactly like it does today. I remember thinking as a kid, oh that can't be right at all. In a few hundred years the language will change because it changes spontaneously. Just look how English was a few hundred years ago. The pronunciation and vocabulary and even grammar of Shakespeare, although early modern English, is a bit difficult for our modern ears to understand. So surely English would change in just that bit of time. But the more I think about it, the more I understand how awesome technology has made learning these days, the more I am convinced that there is no reason at all for the English language or any language to change in a few hundred or even a few thousand years. Now that we have access to the internet, anyone who has access to this kind of knowledge and technology does not need to change our language because anyone can find out the rules and find out perfectly good examples. For the past hundred years or so, we have recordings of the audio of how people speak. This is going to be preserved now for hundreds and hopefully thousands and thousands of years, all of this knowledge. That means that the way that people speak in the future would be based on the way that people spoke before them, and they can even look back and listen to exactly how we speak today and earlier, and realize that is how English is spoken, or whatever modern language it is. So now I realize there is no reason for language to change. So that's why I believe that languages do not evolve. But what do you think? Please leave a comment here on the video. I'd love to hear from you. Also, please subscribe to this channel and follow Polymathy on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Also, I teach Italian, Japanese, and Latin, among other languages. If you're interested in having lessons with me, you can find out more about that in the description of this video. And if you'd like to learn more about how I learned the languages that I learned, I talk about it in my book, Ranieri Reverse Recall and you can get that on Amazon. The link's in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching. As we say in Latin, Walete.